Hello students, I am your physics teacher Dr. Nitin Nair. In the first lecture, I am going to discuss about the syllabus of class 12 physics and I am going to discuss some basic mathematical tools that will be often used in our physics course. Here I am showing the syllabus of class 12 physics. Unit 1 consists of two chapters, chapter 1 electric charges and field, chapter 2 electrostatic potential and capacitance. Unit 2 consists of one chapter, chapter 3, current electricity. The total marks weightage for unit 1 and 2 is 16. Unit 3 consists of two chapters, chapter 4, moving charges and magnetism, and chapter 5, magnetism and matter. Unit 4 consists of two chapters, chapter 6, electromagnetic induction, and chapter 7, alternating current. The marks weightage for unit 3 and 4 is unit 5 consists of one chapter, chapter 8 electromagnetic waves, unit 6 consists of two chapters, chapter 9 ray optics and optical instruments and chapter 10 wave optics. The total mark distribution for unit 5 and 6 is 18. Unit 7 consists of one chapter, chapter 11, dual nature of radiation and matter. Unit 8 consists of two chapters, chapter 12, atoms, chapter 13, nuclei. The marks weightage for unit 7 and 8 is 12. The last unit, unit 9, consists of one chapter, chapter 14, semiconductor electronics, materials, devices and simple circuits. It is of 7 marks. Therefore, the total marks we are going to recall some fundamental mathematical concepts that will be used often in our physics course. Vector algebra, calculus, slope of a graph, trigonometry. We will study these mathematical concepts vector one by algebra. one. What do you mean by vector quantities? Vector quantities are those quantities that have both magnitude and direction. For example, electric field, force, magnetic field, torque, etc. A vector can be represented as vector A is equal to A dot A cap, where A is the magnitude of vector A and A cap is a unit vector of vector A. vector addition. Consider three vectors vector A, vector B and vector R. According to the diagram, vector R is equal to vector A plus vector B. The meaning of this equation is vector R is the resultant of vector A and vector B. Now we are going to see the two important vector operation first is dot product which is also known as scalar product let us consider two vector vector A and vector B the angle between two vector is theta so according to dot product vector A dot vector B is equal to A dot B cos theta where a and B are the magnitudes of vector A and vector B and theta is the angle between two vectors. Here A dot B gives a scalar quantity. For example, work is equal to the dot product of two vectors force and displacement. Work is a scalar quantity. You already studied work in class 11th. Now I am giving another example of dot product. Electric flux which is represented by phi is equal to the dot product of two vectors electric field vector and area vector. You are going to study electric flux in chapter number 1 of class 12. Second vector operation is known as cross product which is also known as vector product. Consider two vector vector A and vector B. 
let theta be the angle between two vectors. According to cross product, A cross B is equal to AB sin theta and cap, where A and B are the magnitudes of vector A and vector B, and n cap is the unit vector of the vector C. Here, A cross B gives a vector quantity and the direction of this vector quantity is perpendicular to the plane containing vector now A. We are going and to solve some numericals related to dot product and cross product. First question is find A dot B where vector A is equal to 2i plus 4j plus 2k and vector B is equal to 3i plus 2j plus 5k. The solution is a dot b is equal to first write vector a 2i 4j 2k dot 3i plus 2j plus 5k. Now multiply the coefficient of i that is 2 into 3 then multiply the coefficient of j 4 into 2 now multiply the coefficient of k 2 into 5 which is equal to 6 plus 8 plus 10 that is 24 24 is the answer calculus is a branch of mathematics which helps us to understand changes between values that are related by a function. The two types of calculus are differentiation and integration. Differentiation, it divides things into small pieces and tells us how they change from one moment to the next. Mathematically it can be given as d by dx of f of x is equal to gx where d by dx is a differential operator which operates on function of x which results in u function gx. Integration. It joins the small pieces together and tells us how much of something is made overall by a series of changes. Mathematically it can be given as integration of function of x which results in new function and a constant c. Calculus is used in various branches of physics. Classical mechanics, thermodynamics, electromagnetism and fluid dynamics. What is the importance of calculus? The development of calculus and its application to the physics and engineering is probably the most significant factor in the development of modern science beyond where it was in the days of Archimedes. This was responsible for the industrial revolution and everything that has followed from it including almost all the major advances of the last centuries. Here I have listed some important integral and differential formulas which will be very useful to you to solve some problems in physics. Here you can see some integral formulas. Integration of x raised to n dx is equal to x raised to n plus 1 upon n plus 1 plus c where c is constant and n is the power of x. Integration of sin x dx is equal to minus cos x plus c. Integration of cos x plus dx is equal to sin x plus c. Integration of 1 upon x dx is equal to log x plus c and integration of e raised to x dx is equal to e raised to x plus c. Now we will see some differential formulas. d by dx of x raised to n is equal to n into x raised to n minus 1 d by dx of sin x is equal to cos x, d by dx of cos x is equal to minus sin x, d by dx of log x is equal to 1 upon x, 
and last d by dx of e raised to x is equal to e raised to x. So students go through these formula. Slope of a graph. Them. Slope of a graph is defined as the ratio of the change in quantity given in y axis to the change in quantity given in x axis. Let's find the slope of this graph. In this graph voltage is taken in y axis current is taken in x axis therefore the slope of this graph is equal to v upon i and we know that v upon i is known as resistance therefore the slope of this graph is resistance now see another example here in this case the current is taken in y axis voltage is taken in x axis so therefore the slope of this graph is equal to i upon v which is equal to 1 upon r and we know that 1 upon r is known as conductance so the slope of first graph is resistance and the slope of the second graph is conductance in this way we can find the slope of any trigonometry. graph trigonometry is a branch of mathematics that studies relationships between side lengths and angle of triangles here i have listed some uses of trigonometry in the field of physics for example, it is used in wave mechanics to study oscillations, in the study of time varying electric fields and magnetic fields, to study projectile motion, to find the components of vectors, in the study of Fourier transform, to study alternating current and alternating voltage. These are some important trigonometric identities student should note them and learn them in this lecture i have discussed the syllabus of class 12 physics and discuss some mathematical concept go through these mathematical concepts as they are prerequisite for studying class 12 physics that's all for now thanks for your kind attention Stay home, stay safe.